Hi, I'm Sherelle Walters Rodriguez, and welcome to CCPL Get Transformed. Well, if you're like a lot of people, not a week goes by where you don't hear something about the opioid crisis. As a result, CCPL decided to work with county agencies and partnering with them to do something to battle this epidemic. The mental health department comes into our libraries and they train people in a REVIVE program. The REVIVE program helps people to identify someone who may be overdosing and teaches them how to use a life-saving drug called Narcan. We're also partnering with Chesterfield County Police. We're handing out these opioid and heroin treatment resources cards. On the back is a list of agencies that someone can call if they are struggling with an addiction. We're doing our part by providing these deactivation drug packets. You bring in your prescription drugs, and this is a way to get rid of them safely so they're not sitting around tempting someone who may have an addiction. And also, our Loud and Clear magazine focuses this quarter on the opioid epidemic. Author Beth Macy is coming. We also have a feature about her. You may know her because she wrote the book Dope Sick. It talks about how we've gotten to this point with this opioid epidemic. So for the next five or 10 minutes, you're going to hear from several different county agencies that will talk about what they're doing in order to fight this epidemic. And we too have been impacted. We've had two overdoses in our libraries. It was actually right before, uh, before Christmas. It was December of 2017 when uh, we had an incident uh, with opioid use in the library. We went in there and saw the individual who had overdosed uh, on heroin passed out slumped and falling from the toilet in the handicap stall onto the floor. So basically what we had seen was this individual's eyes had rolled back in her head, her lips were blue. They put her on a stretcher, they had started CPR, they were the ones who administered um, the Noxalone. Uh, we did not have any of that in the branch. We hadn't had the training yet. Is everybody familiar and kind of heard of the Good Samaritan Law? We did have training just like two weeks after that, the Revive Opioid training with Noxalone and how to administer it. The other thing that struck me after the fact is I kept noting that she was making noises. I did think that she was just going to get sick, but in the opioid training, they talked about the death rattle and the gurgling noises, and I was like, oh, she was doing that. That was what was happening. And I took the noise that I was hearing as a sign of body functioning, but it was body shutting down. One thing that was nice about that training, it did show me that we have the resources. There was the tool in our tool belt of what to do in that situation, and we also changed some of our processes. This will make us faster, respond better, quicker, because we're thinking about what to do if, because if has happened. The grim reality of it is, is that it only takes once to kill you. And it also could be something as simple as a toothache. You know, you go get a tooth taken out and take your first pain pill or drink or whatever, and boom. We say one is too many and a thousand is never enough. What are you addicted to? More. When I think back on that stuff, it was a war, man, every day. To wake up and have this obsession that is driving you. If you don't feed it, it's just the end of the world. But um, I'm not fighting that war no more. There is hope. There is hope. Drugs were more important than anything. Like if my parents had two pain pills left, one for each of them, I would find a way to go in there and steal one. It completely hijacks the brain and it moves up in this idea of, this is what I need to survive. 
When I look back on the nights that I was homeless and it was raining and I didn't have anywhere, not even a, a stoop to sit under and it was cold, all I could think about was getting hot. You know, people who struggle with this addiction so much so that they're willing to put their family members in harm's way. We've had uh, uh, individuals who actually have overdosed in cars with their children in the back seats. We've had individuals who've overdosed in bathrooms of restaurants uh, with their children uh, sitting on the baby changing table. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's an epidemic that's just not exclusive to Chesterfield County, but it's a national epidemic that we, we feel really strong about uh, with the introduction of fentanyl into the game. Uh, just a small nanogram of that part, that substance could impact uh, an officer to the point where they can overdose on scenes. Um, we also have canines that we actually deploy to utilize. People don't think about the fact that the dogs, their primary function is sniffing. So we have to have mechanisms in place like naloxone to be able to provide to officers as well as our canines should they find themselves involved in an overdose situation. Narcan is a prescription medication that is, you know, that reverses opiate overdoses. Basically what Narcan does and its only effect is when an individual takes uh, any kind of opiate-based medication, there are opiate receptors in the brain, and if somebody takes too much of the opiates, it is a central nervous system depressant, which actually can slow down the breathing. When the breathing gets depressed enough, it can stop the heart. When the heart stops and you're not getting enough oxygen, the brain shuts down and death ensues. And so that's what we're seeing with kind of the opiate overdoses. And basically what Narcan does when Narcan is administered, it goes in and goes immediately to those opiate receptors, pushes the opiates off the receptors and blocks them, which then wakes the person up to get them to start breathing again. It wasn't clinically proven that I overdosed, but you know, I passed out and woke up hours later, you know. Probably by the grace of God, I didn't die. You know, maybe even have more trainings through the libraries or the Revive training, which is a state of Virginia program that helps to train individuals in being able to recognize and treat somebody who may be in an opiate overdose. Revive, I think, is an essential piece for change. There's hope. There is hope for the future, there's hope for you. It doesn't matter what your situation is, where you came from, you know, what color you are. There is hope, there is hope. That feeling of hope became the theme as we talked to several county agencies doing their part in fighting this epidemic. As I mentioned, we also have New York Times bestselling author Beth Macy, author of Dope Sick. She'll be here in January to talk about that book and what we can do in order to fight this epidemic. Her information and what she is powerful, you know, just understanding and getting the background and how some of this is actually come to be, it, it, it helps to take some of the stigma away. And I think that's what we need to, I think, focus more on within the community and educating and the, where the library, I think, can play a major role is that, you know, working on changing the stigma. They allow us to take that mask off and get real with ourselves and be honest for the first time for ourselves in order to have recovery for ourselves. This is another place where stigma is changing. The County Jail's Heroin Addiction Recovery Program, also known as HARP. We also have classes offered. We have medical staff here. We have clinicians here. We have anything you could possibly imagine that touches on every single part of recovery and the healing process. The comprehensive program is helping Joy. She's a mother of three with a master's degree in criminal justice. She's recovering from a life-changing heroin addiction. I was selling myself um, to be able to support my habit. You know, you go from having a, an amazing career as a paralegal to um, prostituting. Everything's going to be all right. You ain't got to be that person no more. 
Sheriff Carl Leonard launched HARP in response to a growing number of people entering jail with a drug addiction. I know a, a lot more things about myself now. At first I didn't recognize myself as an addict because I thought I was a functional addict, but come to find out there's no such thing as a functional addict. This epidemic is not indicative to a certain portion of community. It's, it has no boundaries. It's in uh, affluent neighborhoods, it's down in, our, uh, in not so affluent neighborhoods. Major Frank Carpenter heads the police department's investigation bureau. He says policing has changed in response to the epidemic that in 2018 led to more than 200 overdoses in the county, 30 of them fatal. How has policing changed as a result of this drug epidemic? When we sit back and we look at it, you can't arrest your way out of a situation like this. There has to be resources uh, put on the front end and even on the back end. Some of those resources include the prescription take-back program and partnering with other agencies. How does the library play a role? We partnered with the libraries in Chesterfield County and we thought, hey, what a great idea, let's do the same thing. If we can provide a resource card to every adult who comes in and checks out a book, it may not necessarily be for that particular individual, but the resources would be available for a different segment of, of society and population where they would be able to have this available to be able to provide someone in need. The services that we offer here, we try to really kind of address kind of the whole person, but also offering individual counseling, the group therapy, having a peer here that we can link them to. Like other county agencies, Emergency Medical Services has had success in incorporating a peer-to-peer -peer model into a fight to save lives. The Mobile Integrated Healthcare team responds to families, single individuals that need resources in the county. So when she calls, she develops a, a rapport with the patient because of her background and if they want help, then we go do what we call a home visit. Sometimes we meet at a library, sometimes we meet at a restaurant, wherever they want to go, that's where we'll go. The service, part of Mobile Integrated Health Unit, is the first in the state and is serving as a model nationwide. The sole reason why we are so successful in our program, because, you know, she has had the background, she survived, she's thriving now, and uh, when someone can make an instant connection of, you know, I've been there, I've done that, uh, let's talk about things. My peer has really, really saved, turned around at least 13 people since February. Um, a lot of people that we've run into in Chesterfield say they, they really connect with her and they're able to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about their life. If you know someone who needs some help, you can send them to the library to pick up one of these resource cards or they can contact any of the agencies that we featured in the last piece. Also, if you would like to be of help, remember we do have the Revive workshops. They're listed on our website, library.chesterfield.gov or in our Loud and Clear.